Let us understand the details related to views. View is nothing but a named query. We typically create views for most commonly used queries. Unlike tables, views does not physically store the data and whenever we write a query against view, it will fetch the data from underlying tables that are defined as part of the views. We can perform DML operations over the tables via views with restrictions. For example, we cannot perform DML operations on views with joins, group by, etc. Views that can be used to perform DML operations on underlying tables are called as updatable views. Views can be used to provide restricted permissions on tables for DML operations. However, it is not used that often these days. In olden days, we tend to use this strategy to provide restricted permissions on tables for DML operations for some of the users. That being said, let's load the SQL magic. Let's create this environment variable called as database underscore URL. Now we can run this command to actually create a view. The view name is orders underscore V. We are trying to define the view with this logic, select star from orders. It's a plain simple select query on the table and hence it is the updatable view. I can run this. You can run this command as many times as you want. If you change the logic here, the logic will be reapplied on the view that is already existing. For example, in this case, I can uh, say select star from orders where order status equal to complete. So this is uh, updated query within the view and now the view will have that logic. So typically we use create or replace so that we update the view whenever we run that command. There is also an option of just using create view. However, if you try to run multiple times, then if the view already exists, it will just fail. You can see here, it is saying auto underscore v already exists. But this one will run as many times as you want without throwing any error. That being said, you can actually query the same information schema view, which is nothing but tables. Tables is the view name, which will give us the details about the tables. It will also give us the details about views. Now you can run this and you can see that there is orders table and also there is a orders underscore v view. Orders is a base table, whereas orders underscore v is a view. This is how you can actually get basic metadata of the view. Now orders underscore v is updatable. In this case, this update will run without any issues. All 68,883 records are affected, which means updated. You can also validate by running this query. You can see that order status is lowercase for each and every record. Earlier, the status used to be uppercase. Now it is changed to lowercase. If you want, you can run this again so that the status is changed to uppercase and you can validate by running this query again. So orders underscore v is an updatable view and we are able to update this view. Now let's create a new view. The view name is order underscore details underscore v. The view is defined on top of a join results. And also keep in mind that once you specify create view view name or create or replace view view name, you also need to use as without as it will not work. Then you have to provide the query based on which you are trying to define the view. In this case, this uh, query have a join between orders and order items on uh, orders order ID and uh, order items uh, order item order ID. And you should be able to create this view. You can actually preview the data. In this case, you will get 10 records. It contain records from both orders table as well as order items table because view is defined using join between the two without any restrictions on the columns. We got all the columns and hence uh, we are able to see all the columns from both orders and order items. You can also run this query to get the count using the view. So any query which we typically can run on the table, we can run similar type of queries on views as well. There are no restrictions. Now you should be able to perform group by, order by, and also aggregate functions such as sum based on the keys that are defined as part of the group by. We have seen this while going through the writing basic queries earlier. Then we have developed a query which actually join orders and order items to get daily product revenue. I am using the same query here on top of the view. So there is no join anymore because the view already have the join using that view which have join i'm just grouping by order date and order item product id and then i'm trying to get the revenue using the order item subtotal and also finally i'm sorting the data in ascending order by date and then descending order by revenue this is how you can actually define even the complex queries on top of the views using the conventional sql clauses which are provided to us as part of the databases now you can run this and it should work you can also run this. In this case, I am only getting the records related to order ID 2. There are three such records and you can see all the three records here. So you can perform where, you can perform group by, you can perform order by. All standard SQL clauses can be used here on top of the view. 
However, we cannot directly update data in tables via views when the view is defined with the joins. In our case, order details v is uh, defined with the join. Even uh, operations such as group by or order by, if they are part of view, will make views not updatable by default. Now you can run this and you can see that it fail. You can see that it is saying cannot update view order details v. Views that do not select from a single table or view are not automatically updatable. To enable updating the view, provide an instead of update trigger or an unconditional on update do instead rule. Don't worry too much about the rule or the instead of update trigger. We don't need to worry too much about those because uh, typically we don't use views for updating the data as part of our data engineering applications or BA applications or even mobile or web applications. We typically use views to streamline our logic for large queries. So if you have multiple large queries and if all the large queries have some common logic, you can consider creating a view for that common logic and use that view in the large queries. That will make the queries reusable and also modularized. It will take care of streamlining the support for the reports in the existing BI or data engineering applications. So keep that in mind and make sure that you are very comfortable with the views. If not, you will struggle to cope up with the project. Spending some time in understanding the views in realistic examples is very, very important. We will see a few examples at a later point in time once we go through analytic functions and all. But uh, when it comes to the actual projects, they are used a lot more often with a lot more complex uh, use cases.